The Kelvin-Stokes theorem, also known as the curl theorem, is a theorem in vector calculus on R3. Given a vector field, the theorem relates the integral of the curl of the vector field over some surface to the line integral of the vector field around the boundary of the surface. The Kelvin-Stokes theorem is a special case of the generalized Stokes theorem. In particular, a vector field on R3 can be considered as a one-form in which case curl is the exterior derivative. Theorem. Let gamma A B R2 be a piecewise smooth Jordan plane curve. The Jordan curve theorem implies that gamma divides R2 into two components, a compact one and another that is non-compact. Let D denote the compact part that is bounded by gamma and suppose psi. DR3 is smooth with S equals psi. If gamma is the space curve defined by gamma equals psi and F is a smooth vector field on R3, then proof. The proof of the theorem consists of four steps. We assume Green's theorem. So what is of concern is how to boil down the three-dimensional complicated problem to a two-dimensional rudimentary problem. When proving this theorem, mathematicians normally use the differential form. The pullback of a differential form is a very powerful tool for this situation. But learning differential forms requires substantial background knowledge. So, the proof below does not require knowledge of differential forms, and may be helpful for understanding the notion of differential forms. First step of the proof defines so that P is the pullback of F, and that P is our two-valued function, dependent on two parameters U. In order to do so we define P1 and P2 as follows. Where is the normal inner product of R3 and here and after, stands for the bilinear form according to matrix A. Second step of the proof according to the definition of a line integral, where, J psi stands for the Jacobian matrix of psi, and the clear circle denotes function composition. Hence, so, we obtain the following equation. Third step of the proof first, calculate the partial derivatives, using the Leibniz rule. So, on the other hand, according to the definition of a surface integral, so, we obtain fourth step of the proof combining the second and third steps, and then applying Green's theorem completes the proof. Application for conservative vector fields and scalar potential. In this section, we will discuss the lamella vector field based on Kelvin-Stokes theorem. First, we define the notarization map as follows. Is a strictly increasing function. For all piecewise smooth paths C, A, B, R3 and all smooth vector fields F, the domain of which includes C, 1 has. So, we can assume the domain of the curve to be 0, 1. The lamella vector field definition 2 to 1. A smooth vector field F on an open UR3 is called a lamella vector field if times F equals 0. In fluid dynamics, it is often referred to as a vortex-free or a rotational vector field. Furthermore, if the domain of F is simply connected, then in mechanics, it can be identified as a conservative force. Helmholtz's theorems in this section. We will introduce a theorem that is derived from the Kelvin-Stokes theorem and characterizes vortex-free vector fields. In fluid dynamics it is called Helmholtz's theorems. That theorem is also important in the area of homotopy theorem. Theorem 2 to 1, and CP 142 of Fujimoto let UR3 be an open subset with a lamella vector field F, and piecewise smooth loops C0, C1, 0, 1, U. If there is a function H, 0, 1, times 0, 1, U such that TLH0, H is piecewise smooth. TLH1, H equals C0 for all T, 0, 1. TLH2, H equals C1 for all T, 0, 1. TLH3, H equals H for all S, 0, 1. Then, some textbooks such as Lawrence call the relationship between C0 and C1 stated in theorem 2 to 1 as homotope and the function H. 0, 1, times 0, 1, U as homotopy between C0 and C1. 
However, homotope or homotopy in above-mentioned sense are different typical definitions of homotope or homotopy. So from now on we refer to homotopy in the sense of theorem 2 to 1 as tube-like homotopy. Proof of the theorem here and after, the stands for joining paths, the stands for backwards of curve let D equals 0, 1, times 0, 1. By our assumption, C1 and C2 are piecewise smooth homotopic, there are the piecewise smooth homogony H. Dm in, let S be the image of D under H. Then, will be obvious according to the theorem 1 and F is lamella vector field that, right side of that equation is 0, so, here, and, H is tubular homotopy that, that, line integral along gamma 2 and line integral along gamma 4 are compensated each other so, on the other hand, that, subjected equation is proved. Application for conservative force Helmholtz's theorem gives an explanation as to why the work done by a conservative force in changing an object's position is path independent. First, we introduce the lemma 2 to 2, which is a corollary of an a special case of Helmholtz's theorem. Lemma 2 to 2. Let UR3 be an open subset, with a lamella vector field F and a piecewise smooth loop C0, 0, 1, U. Fix a point P U, if there is a homotopy H. 0, 1, times 0, 1, U such that, SC0, H is piecewise smooth, SC1, H equals C0, 4 all T, 0, 1, SC2, H equals P for all T, 0, 1, SC3, H equals H equals P for all S, 0, 1. Then, lemma 2 to 2, obviously follows from theorem 2 to 1. In lemma 2 to 2, the existence of H satisfying SC0, 2, SC3, is crucial. It is a well-known fact that, if U is simply connected, such H exists. The definition of simply connected space follows. Definition 2 to 2. Let M R N be non-empty, connected and path connected. M is called simply connected if and only if for any continuous loop. 0, 1, M there exists H. 0, 1, times 0, 1, M such that, SC0, H is continuous. SC1, H equals C for all T, 0, 1. SC2, H equals P for all T, 0, 1. SC3, H equals H equals P for all S, 0, 1. You will find that, the, SC1, 2, SC3, of both lemma 2 to 2 and definition 2 to 2 is same. So, someone may think that, for a conservative force, the work done in changing an object's position is path independent, is elucidated. However, there are very large gaps between following two. There are continuous H such that it satisfies SC1, 2, SC3. There are piecewise smooth H such that it satisfies SC1, 2, SC3. To fill that gap, the deep knowledge of homotopy theorem is required. For example, the following resources may be helpful for you. Lee teaches Whitney approximation theorem in how to use that theorem to this ISO. More general statements appear in considering above mentioned fact in lemma 2 to 2, we will obtain following theorem. Theorem 2 to 2. Let UR3 be a simply connected and open with a lamella vector field F for all piecewise smooth loops. 0, 1, U we have, Kelvin Stokes theorem on singular 2 Cuban cube subdivisionable sphere, singular 2 Cuban boundary definition 3 to 1 set D equals A1, B1, times A2, B2, R2 and let U be a non-empty open subset of R3. The image of D under a piecewise smooth map psi, DU is called a singular 2 cube. Moreover, we define the notarization map of D where I equals 0, 1. Then theta D has the following property. Lemma 3 to 1. Let D be a singular 2 cube with map psi and U R 3 open and non-empty. Suppose the image of I times I under a piecewise smooth map be a singular 2 cube. 
If f is a smooth vector field on u we have, we omit the proof of the lemma. Using the lemma from now we consider all singular two cubes to be notarized. In other words we assume that the domain of all singular two cubes is i times i. In order to facilitate the discussion of boundary, we define gamma 1, gamma 4 are the one-dimensional edges of the image of i times i here and after. This stands for joining paths and this stands for backwards of curve. Cube subdivision definition 3 to 2. A non-empty subset SR3 is said to be a cube subdivisionable sphere when there are at least one index family of singular two cubes such that lambda is a finite set. CSS0, for all lambda lambda, phi lambda is an injective function on i times i and for almost all int. CSS1, S is equal to the union of S lambda as lambda varies in lambda. CSS2, lambda 1 lambda 2 implies. CSS3, if C1, C2 equals 0 or 1, J1, J2 equals 1 or 2 in, then then is called a cube subdivision of the S. Definitions 3 to 3. Let SR3 be a cube subdivisionable sphere with cube subdivision. The is said to be an edge of the cube subdivision if implies. That means L is said to be an edge of if and only if there are unique lambda, C and J such that the boundary of the cube subdivision is a collection of edges in the above sense. Means the boundary of the notation for an edge L is as follows. The definition of the boundary of the definitions 3 to 3 is apparently depends on the cube subdivision. However, considering the following fact, the boundary is not depends on the cube subdivision. Lemma 3 to 4. Let SR3 be a cube subdivisionable sphere with cube subdivisions. Then therefore the definition of boundary is not dependent on the choice of cube subdivision. Therefore the following definition is well defined. Definitions 3 to 5. Let SR3 be a cube subdivisionable sphere and then if then and then such L is said to be an edge of S. 